Hey, IDS 302 Summer Session B. It's Sunday morning, 11.40, um, June 14th. How you doing? Hope everybody's feeling well. Um, it's just an incredible... I was watching uh, the movie 2012 as background for when I was going through your discussion boards and uh, kind of chuckled about how quaint that was, that they thought the... Uh, end of the world was going to be uh, tidal waves and earthquakes and all kinds of things when instead we're going down the tubes and uh, with uh, a little virus and big social uh, movements. Hopefully it'll all come out in the end. Um, all right. So that was a bad opening. I'm not even going to restart it. So you can just have to deal with it. All right. So module five. First, let's take a look at uh, some of the things that came before us. Number one, I want to remind you, remember this is a compressed course from 15 weeks down to six. So that means it's even more compressed than the seven and a half week sessions A and B. Uh, so it's a lot of work and it should be because it's an upper level university class and it's in six weeks and you signed up for it and you paid good money for it. There's uh, I'm not, Nobody's complained or anything, but I like to send out that reminder that as we get in these last two weeks here, it's going to be intense. And if you and if you turn in low quality work, it'll be scored accor accordingly. It's not about just throwing something in there and getting it. Okay, I just wanted to be really um, clear on that. That now is not the time to slack off. Um, if I look at the overall class, just to get an idea here. Um, overwhelmingly everyone's got A's or B's, okay? Um, that can start slipping. I have seen some slippage already, but you know, it's tough. And it just, it's not like, you know, you don't wanna get an A for just showing up. Well, maybe you do, but you shouldn't. Um, so keep it up and let me know if anything is going on. All right, so let's take a look then in module five. No, let's not yet, sorry. Um, okay. If you see any of your scores that are missing or wrong or what have you, you got to let me know. Okay, I appreciate those who've let me know that I slipped up and not give them their five points for the video. I might have got distracted, anything. So if I missed that, let me know. As far as that bonus survey video, there's actually two parts to it. I'm just adding the five points onto your module four video two score to make it 10 out of five just as an FYI, okay? But let me know if you see anything missing. All right, um, in terms of this discussion board we did on um, becoming an interdisciplinarian, I did mention, I didn't mention, it's in the instructions per this week's readings. Um, there were some really important readings in there by Newell and Benson. And so referencing this week's readings is what I said, what I wrote in the instructions, and if you didn't reference Newell or Benson, I dinged you for that, often heavily, I guess, um, because it's important that not only that you read those, because they're very foundational in terms of the information you get for this this academic focus you've taken on, you know, but also as an instructor-student relationship, if the instructions are reference the readings, then reference the readings, okay? This was not a exercise in explaining to me again about being a jack of all trades, okay? That comes from personal experience. We're trying to add to that now, adding to your acumen as interdisciplinarians, okay? One thing I want to state in the discussion boards I've looked at, you got to give me paragraphs. You got to give anybody paragraphs who's reading your work, okay? You can't just have one long drawn out thing. Well, you can, you have, and I'm digging you for it now because I've explained this forever. Discipline writing requires you to understand where you are shifting gears and making a new paragraph. And even in the discussion board, I said you could do a paragraph break, a line break, to give the reader a breath instead of just brown all the way down. Okay, it's discipline writing. It's understanding that you care about your work, okay? Because if you give me this in any papers, it's going to get, you know, slammed. Okay. Please remember that. All right. Okay. So in terms of the, uh, you know, articles, journal articles that you found in your discussion board on the, uh, primary sources, they were really good. Okay. Um, and, and I know I have said this maybe once or twice, but this is one of the best classes I've had. Okay. 
and put me on a lie detector test and I'll tell, tell the truth. It's one of the best classes I've had. You guys are doing quality work. I just want to keep pushing you to get to the finish line at that high level. Okay. So, but remember that those articles are not intended to be individually interdisciplinary, right? Obviously, I think we know that, but I caught some who might have mentioned that, uh, that it wasn't, you know, talking about two different things. Well, of course, that's the whole point of this, is to look at those individual disciplines that you have, that you're choosing to work with in your topic, and then to move forward with those and figure out how they how they can be integrated, right? And, and what kind of conflict, and we'll get into that, okay? Uh, and no more redos, okay? Going to the finish line, there's no more redos. I'm not letting anybody redo anything. Um, you can definitely fix something per my feedback, whether it's step two, step one, step whatever it is, fix it because step five, remember, is the final, is at, is at step five, but then that's the final paper. You're putting all these together. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. So if you bombed on one of those, you can fix it because you're still going to get graded on the entire paper at the end of the class, right? All right, so that's good. Um, all right, let's see. What in the world? I don't know why I wrote that. Um, oh, um, I wanted to talk about, mention... Um, that there is more than one model for integration, right? You know that it's not only this, not only Tanner. Tanner came late to the party, actually, okay? Repco, Newell, um, Klein, those have been standard models. So remember, there's different models of doing things. Don't be so definitive in saying this is the one, because it's not. They're, we're just using this one here, okay? Um, let's see. Okay, stay away from the I believe, I think, and whatever, and a lot of things. Just get to it, okay? Obviously, writing it, I know you think it, all right? Um, if the research supports something, well, that's and that's what I'd rather see than I believe, okay? Um, all right, so uh, Easter egg number one is, these are long Easter eggs now, but I want to I give these to you as like memes that will stick in your mind. Easter egg number one is course ends in less than two weeks. So that ought to put a little fear in you, right? Um, the course ends in less than two weeks. Uh, it would be uh, actually a week from Friday, if I really want to push it, Friday being course six days, depending on when you're viewing this. There's not a lot of time. You got to stay focused. You got you to gotta keep going, okay? So that was that. All right, module five, chapter 12, all right? Um, the value of interdisciplinary studies, uh, pointing out a couple of um, important aspects of this. Um, okay, so much has already been written about interdisciplinary integrative studies. One might already see the inherent value of each in their own life. That's important. Um, okay, so the critics of interdisciplinarity and integrative learning are plentiful. We've read some of those, hopefully. Many of those critics are academ academicians that have a myopic focus on research and learning. That is, they stay in their lane, okay? Other critics are those that have a little understanding of what IDS is, okay? So um, he talks about that and moving into uh, other sections that, um, you know, uh, the problem with interdisciplinary integrative studies might be better looked at as a systemic complex problem. Um, he's not arguing that the disciplines shouldn't exist, but he's saying that learning has changed over the course of time. You know, back in the day, you know, you were a master at one thing, you know, or like Leonardo da Vinci, uh, a prolific poly polymathist. Okay, so however, what happens when you encounter a complex problem? If you stay in that one area, it's going to leave you with limited and probably uh, incorrect results or, 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 or uh, resolution, okay? And this goes back into, he talks about how uh, education has changed um, and things like that. And he's still talking about uh, un until they finish formal education, which may include graduate school, students are taught from a disciplinary perspective. 
and the training of teachers is also disciplinary. But in the real world, the problems we encounter are not disciplinary. Okay, think of parenting. Parenting is not disciplinary. Owning a home is not disciplinary. Working in a career is not disciplinary. Okay, they all touch on things like that. But, you know, he's talking about liberal studies, which has kind of eked its way in, even in my department, we offer that program now as an alternative to interdisciplinary studies. And what does it lack? If you said integration, you're right. Okay, so um, there's a need for interdisciplinary studies. And he talks, he mentions Newell's uh, response to Benson's criticism. If you haven't read that, I would go back and do it. It's really important, okay? We need interdisciplinarians to overcome the problems of having too many experts. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't be an expert, but what do we say an expert does? It really focuses and zooms on one thing. That's great, you know? Carlos Santana is an expert guitar player. Okay, and that's great. We need him. I need him. <laughs> but uh, in terms of putting the whole band together, you know, different instruments. I don't know. That was a horrible analogy. Okay. Um, but it does, he does say Newell argued that students will face challenges in the next several decades, unlike those in the past, where small events on one part of the planet and in one sphere of human existence can now end up having large and relatively rapid effects on other parts of the planet, et cetera, et cetera, which is true. Back in the day, people learned about, you know, living in their village, living in their communities, living in their cities, living in their states. And then, you know, the world has shrunk in terms of our connection. And so many, there's so many um, facets and aspects and, and impacts to a particular problem that one discipline cannot solve that, okay? Um, the world in which we live is not disciplinary. You cannot function this world from a single perspective, all right? And it's a world characterized by complex problems, okay? The challenge for the interdisciplinarian is to view disciplines from the relevancy they add to real world problems. This is the skill that I want you to focus on because it's the best one you can communicate in your elevator pitch, okay? Integrative learning is a process, okay, where students bridge curricular and co-curricular activities, explore and make connections. Stay away from the jack of all trades analogy. It's old, it's, it's washed up. Step up your game because you're worth it to a higher level than jack of all trades. All right. Okay. And they're talking, he's talking about value defined, which is interesting. College degrees are typically valued in terms of you know how much money a graduate makes. Um I I think, you know, IDS is low. I think um like engineering is high, whatever. But the question then is money the only thing that is valued in our society? Well, for many it is. For many, you want to get yours. You want to, you want to get your piece of the pie. You want to, you know, get the bling, get the, um, you know, make it rain. You got, you want to do all this, and, you know, but uh, in this area, you didn't choose it for that. I know you didn't, because you wouldn't be here. You'd be somewhere else. So this is a more valuable degree for those who understand what kind of value it can bring, all right? But it's left to the student to define. That's the challenge. See, you can go out and, and, and study, you know, electrical engineering, excuse me, um, electrical engineering, and you're pretty much defined. Electrical engineer is pretty well defined. As an IDS integrative student, you get to define that. That's a responsibility and, and, and as a benefit, okay? Um, so college degrees, how about the value instead of the income? College graduates should be judged on their ability to accomplish their life's goals and dreams. All right. Um, so, how will you value this interdisciplinary learning experience? How do you define it to those who are interested? Parents, friends, potential employers. The goal for you should be to construct an interdisciplinary learning experience that leads you toward one of your goals. All right. So, he talks about that. As an inter important, as an interdisciplinary integrative learner, you will have critics for as long as you allow your learning to be criticized. Okay, it will be up to you to determine the value of your education and let others know how you define it. Okay, so like I said, I've had to def defend it, define it for quite some time, and I'm proud of it. You know, it's enabled me to get you know, to accomplish and, and, and reach many of my goals and dreams. And I've talked about quite a few of them here. Some I was accomplishing before I knew this existed. All right, chapters 13, 14, and 15, I list a supplemental. That means 
you can get something out of them, but I'm not going to require you to use that information here. Talk about job hunting and interdisciplinary portfolios. It's a real good way to look at things. Interdisciplinary resumes. Okay. And then chapter 15 is graduation and graduate school. So these are important chapters for your future, however you define it, you know, and it's not for everyone. That's why I'm not going to get into it. I have students in this class sometimes that are my age. I have students. Why is my things are dying? No way. I thought they were charged. Okay. You can still hear me, can't you? All right. Let's go to um, uh, the discussion board, thinking outside the box, due on 616. Um, what? Why is this? Why is it important? Well, you're going to be looking at an exhaustive list of disciplines. That means these are individual silos of learning that are found in certain uh, uh, institutions of higher learning. So they can be considered disciplines, but you can see how long that list is, okay? And follow the instructions, but it's an exercise in thinking outside the box, another old school term I'm not a big fan of, but expanding your horizons, expanding your ideas about what it means to be an interdisciplinarian. Aren't you better off that you can pluck at any of these that you need to solve a problem, to get a job, to learn an issue, to resolve a problem? It's it's better, in my opinion. So take a look at that discussion. Let's get to Easter egg number two. Easter egg number two is don't procrastinate. I never like telling people what to do, but don't procrastinate, okay? Because uh, this is not a class now that you should cut it close, all right? Uh, all right, so let's talk about that survey link discussion board. You should be posting your links, and you should be helping doing a few other of your of your of your um, to do them all of your peers surveys. Um, I'll, like I said, I'll participate in them. Survey Monkey will only allow you to get 40 results, so but there's only 20 some students less you know active in the class, so you know that's a good way to get some some data, right? Um, your surveys, I hope they're great. I mean, I don't like, I don't look at them, obviously, but you know, you know how we went through that. Please watch the videos if you haven't. All right. Um, then we get to Tanner's step four to critically anal uh, analyze common discipline insights, insights and patterns of connection. I'm going to get into that on Wednesday. Okay. I want to devote a video to that because it's the first time I'm articulating step four this way. And so I want to walk through it with you so you know what I'll expect and, and how we're going to look at it. You know, there's not really a good sample for this, but that's okay. I take that into consideration. All right. So in the meantime, your step three that's due tonight, I hope you have a good annotated bibliography that you followed that video, that you followed those samples. If you didn't, that's how you get dinged. An annotated bibliography that's where formatting is very important too, right in there. All right. And how you, you know, how you articulate the summary. I thought there were great examples for that one. The video was really good and you should be, you know, satisfied with that. All right. Um, let's say, okay. So like I said, I'll talk to you Wednesday. In the meantime, get a hold of me. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, you know, keep, keep apprised of, the social upheaval going on. If you're participating in it, be safe. Wear a mask, hopefully. Um, I know it's really, it's the interesting that I've seen the the amount of separation between those who are erring on the side of caution, like me, because I have underlying conditions, and then those that are erring on the side of let's party, you know. Um, just please be you know, where I'm not going to lecture. You guys know the drill, right? And in terms of the social upheaval, um, Black Lives Matter, uh, the analogy and the metaphor, whatever you want to call it that I would use is that, you know, we know all lives matter, but if we're all sitting around a swimming pool and we're all having a good time, and we're all great and everything's doing good. If somebody's struggling in the pool. Guess whose life matters? All right. So, you know, there's a lot of ways to look at this. Again, my academic focus was African, African-American studies and human rights. So I do feel qualified to give certain opinions on this. And as a observer of society for well over 50 years, 
Um, I've seen a few things. So again, take it easy out there. Be good to each other and forks up. Easter egg number three, stay focused. Okay. See ya.